Afternoon, it's Saturday. Uh, there's been a couple of things that I've read, a couple of videos I've watched by some makers on YouTube about an article about a former um, person associated with working for the CDC in some capacity that came forward and was saying that there was a microchip embedded in the Ebola vaccine and that that was a nefarious plan to get people chipped by taking the vaccine. So where I'm at now is a, a site called Able Danger, A-B-E-L, danger, dot net. And they're dissecting, because we have to think in these terms too about is things real or are they a hoax? So, asking the question, is it real or is it a hoax? And um, apparently this person has maybe went a little farther than I have, but I haven't been able to find anything about the uh, person. I Oh, I can't think of his name. Uh, Hoskins? Yeah, there it is. Brent Hoskins. I haven't been able to find too much about Brent Hoskins, and this person says that it's impossible to confirm that he actually worked for the CDC. And then whether this outbreak is real, which I've already stated in a prior video that I think it's a bioweapon myself, or forced vaccinations in the name of Ebola are likely to become a reality. That would seem to be, in this person's idea, a fact. Now there's another shill site, Snopes, call it a hoax, but they supposedly call many things hoax, hoaxes, I mean. So, <clears throat> this is a statement by the Hoskins person. Can't sit idly by as atrocities unfold. The American government wants to implant RFID chips in every man, woman, and child. Well, I, I've already heard that years ago. And now using threats of Ebola to push this nefarious plot, the public going to be forced to make a decision between horrible demise of Ebola or getting the chip implanted under their skin and their body through a vaccine. So then you come down here and this is Aaron Russo. I've watched his testimonies, different things he's made. But during an interview, he did, he did say in the video, um, that they wanted him to join their little club, New World Order Club. And he did not, but he asked questions why and you know, what are you, what are you guys got against the people and stuff? So this is Nick Rockefeller. And he was asked, you know, he asked him, what's the end game? You're rich, you got all the power and everything you want. What's the end game? And Rockefeller said to get everyone chipped and have complete control over society. And then Rousseau mentioned that if you didn't go along or spoke out against what they were doing, then they could simply turn your chip off and you had no access to any of your cash or anything. It was an interesting video. And he's also interviewed um, top guys at the IRS about how your income tax is a simply voluntary tax according to their own uh, guidelines, but yet they can jail people if they fail to pay the voluntary tax. So that was an interesting watch of that video by Aaron Russo also. So when you come over here to abledanger.net you can watch this video. It is actually uh, longer than three minutes and two seconds if you find the original interview. So is the CDC whistleblower telling the truth about the Ebola vaccine simply being a way to chip the people. Maybe. Maybe not. We have no 
actual verification of his employment in a capacity with them, or I at least have not been able to find it. And then there are other things on here about creating weather related damages and how they make money off of it. It says following this upload, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange deleted all information on hurricane weather contracts, trading weather derivatives while having access to technology to modify temperature, rainfall, drought, tweak the path of hurricanes constitutes insider trading. There's some other things. There's a little stuff about a Liberian scientist nailing the Ebola cause. And I've already shown you about uh, Tecmira. DOD gave contract $140 million. This man believes it's a combination of two things, water poisoning and phony vaccine injections, which were bogus and formaldehyde and a live virus delivered via shots. Now, I've also been hearing other people, other scientific-minded scientists, whatever you want to call them, saying that there's three strains actually. And the, the, the most interesting one that I heard, if this man is anywhere near accurate, was that one of the strains contained the common cold virus. And if this was real and not a hoax, when you think about it, you can transfer a cold to a lot of people. When you touch things, you cough on them, you just go cough near them even, you know, catch a cold from people all the time. So that was kind of thought-provoking to me to hear him say something like that. And this is riseearth.com. This man that's supposedly in Ghana is confirming it's a hoax and that we need to know what's happening. And they're lying, capitalized. The virus does not exist, Ebola as a virus, but we have a, we have a patent over here. And he says they, the Red Cross is, is um, brought a disease to four specific countries for four specific reasons. And only those who receive treatments and injections from the Red Cross get it, and that's why the Liberians and Nigerians are kicking the Red Cross out of their countries. A little bit about depopulation here. But he's not saying that that is why they would be brought there. He's, he's saying it's too hard to depopulate that population when they have so many born every day versus the amount that Ebola would kill every day. So the first reason this article gives is getting troops on the ground in Nigeria, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. They're saying there's no missing girls. Remember that one? They needed to get troops into Nigeria to steal the new oil reserves that's been found. And of course, uh, reason two, the world's largest supplier of diamonds. Reason three, in addition to stealing the oil, forced vaccinations. 
You know, if, the, if this person is saying that Ebola is not true Ebola, it's something different, then that is why quotation mark Ebola has quotations. Some other form of poison is what they're saying. Reason four, appearing of an Ebola pandemic used to scare countless millions into taking the Ebola vaccine, which in reality is the pandemic. And then this little thought provoker here, if the Ebola was really spread from person to person instead of control spread through vaccination, why would the CDC and the U.S. government continue to allow flights in and out of these countries with no regulation or at all? And there's some other things. Another Liberian-born faculty member of, the US, of a U.S. university writing an article in the Liberian newspaper, the Daily Observer, claiming that Ebola is the result of, which I said, and my thoughts were, it's a bioweapon, the result of the bioterrorism experiments conducted by the U.S. Dr. Cyril Broderick claims sites around Africa and West Africa have over the years been set up for testing emergency disease, emerging, excuse me, diseases especially Ebola. WHO and several other UN agencies have been implicated in selecting and enticing African countries to participate in the testing events promoting vaccinations. Hey, Bill Gates likes them back vaccinations. But pursuing various testing regimens. Reports narrate stories of the DOD funding Ebola trials on humans, which started just weeks before the outbreak in Guinea and Sierra Leone. That's International Business Time. Article there. Supposedly, Ebola breakout coincided with UN vaccine programs. Pharmaceutical and biotech industries will have profited handsomely with biodefense research generals, high civil servants, UN bureaucrats sheepishly sign multi-million euro research and development contracts. Quite coincidental, the earliest outbreak in Guinea happened alongside three major vaccine campaigns conducted by the WHO, the UN Children's Agency, UNICEF. At least two of the vaccine programs were implemented by Medicine Sons Frontiers, and Doctors Without Borders. While well, some of these vaccines were produced by Sanofi Pasteur, Prince Pharmaceutical, whose major shareholder is the Rothschild Group. Of course, the Rothschilds run nearly all the world's central banks. And I have a family network. I don't know how that's verifiable, but it's... They control well over half of the total value of all the money in the world. Five hundred trillion dollars. Then you can come down a little bit more stuff. Patent applicants, clearly described as including the Government of the United States of America, is represented by the Secretary, Department of Health and Human Services, Center for Disease Control. The patent summary says, the invention provides the isolated human Ebola viruses denoted as Bundy Bugyo Ebobun, deposited with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, Atlanta, Georgia, United States of America, on November 26, 2007, and accorded an ascension number 20070-6291. So there you go. Some more thought provocation. Y'all be safe, and God bless all of you.